You saw the punch totals. Margarito was 18 of 69 in that last round. He was 17 of 51 on his power connects. A drizzle here at Caesar's Palace. It started when they walked out for this main event. There's a canopy over the ring. The crowd isn't going anywhere. Not with this kind of action and a world title on the line. Even with that good last round for Margarito, you see the experience, the championship experience and smartness. He's not getting careless. He respects control. He knows that he has power. He knows his opponent. Body shot with the right and then goes to the side of the head with the same hand. Now he digs to the body with the left and tries to put a combination together with Centron against the ropes. And right now, Margarito doing it in a very workmanlike fashion. He's doing it with technique and he's doing it with amounts of punches which we expected. Put them together. Throw him, go put Centron down. down. Centron Margarito five, just swarms him seven, here in the fourth seven, round. Seven, and Kermit Centron is down on the canvas with still over a minute to go here in round number four. Centron's gonna need now that power. And he's gonna need a little recklessness from Margarito to turn this fight around. The champ comes flying in. Centron hanging on. Down to the canvas again. Three, Being scored a knockdown. Four, you know five, you gotta fight him with Margarito. Six, 11 years seven, pro experience. Centron four and a half. It's showing. There's no three knockdown rule. Unified rules, world title on the line. There's a right hand by Centrone. Maybe his only hope at this point, but he needs to survive these last 30 seconds. That is a real problem now because with the lack of experience, when you're fighting like Centrone and you know that you have the power advantage and that's what you depend on and that hasn't worked and that's all you have. You have nothing to fall back on. No experience at this level to right say hand. I can pull myself full. Tough spot right now. It is it's a tough What a tough spot he's See, in. Margarito's helping him a little bit by not going downstairs. Stop, don't push, not don't going push. to the body and not freezing Centron. Help Centron survive a little bit that round. Margarito would have served himself a little better by going downstairs. Give me some legs, okay? You hear me? I need some legs. Deep breath. Listen, it ain't over till it's over, baby. All right? All right? It ain't over till it's over. You're looping your right hand too much. I need the jab. I need to back him up Fourth with the jab. Fourth round spectacular for Tony. Punch numbers, but not just punch numbers. Quality punches and aim punches, selective punches to the right places. That's what an experience of Margarito showed you right there. Second knockdown that time as Cintron falling to the side was hanging on, trying not to hit the canvas, ruled the knockdown. So two knockdowns scored in a big, big fourth round for the WBO champion of the world, Antonio Margarito. Well, if ever there's a time where Kermit Cintron needs to rely on his power, the time is now. The undefeated welterweight viewed as one of the biggest punchers pound for pound in the sport today. Taking on a man who many says may be the most underrated fighter in the sport today. Zintron's jab on the eight of 131 for 6% as we start off this fifth round. Plus a right hands together with an uppercut and what that does is it brings on a little something more from Tony Margarito. Come on, Kermit. Again, it's not go, just the pure clean, amount though. of punches by Margarito. It's that he's been accurate and that he's placed the well. He's been good with his selection of punches, Joe. He's shown a nice repertoire. What does that tell you with Kermit Cintron hugging around the waist at that moment, Teddy? He's desperate and he's trying to he's save some time. Up. He's desperate. He's trying. He's, it's one of two things. He's trying to buy some time, which he needs to get a chance to recover, to get his bearings, get his head together. Or if it continues, 
it might be a guy breaking down, a young guy panicking Teddy, in this kind of fight. He is not steady on his feet, and now he's on a knee. No, he hasn't five, been steady for a good minute six, and a half of this fifth round. Seven, and you know what, Joe? It's not just eight, the physical damage. It's nine, the body language. Look at it. He's fight? not here. You want to fight? He's been asked the right question by a good referee right there. Can because the body language would beg you, beg you, not just the physical action, but the body language would beg you to ask that question. Right now, Sintron looks to me like a kamikaze guy. He's looking to get it over with. This is going to be the longest minute of his life here in this fifth round, if he can survive it at all. He's not only hurt, he's badly discovered. Five. Look Six. at the way he's looking over Seven. his corner. He wants his corner. No, that's it, Teddy. He wants that's his it. corner. He was Marshall looking Marshall over. Marshall. You saw the body language. He was looking over at the corner, looking for intervention, looking for help, saying, I can't handle this. I'm not ready for this tonight. Help me. And his corner, they helped him. He's breaking down in tears. And you saw in it happen. hold of Marshall Kaufman, who's been like a father to him. 24-0 with 22 knockouts as they entered the biggest fight of their lives. But Antonio Margarito was just too much on this very special evening. Well, we talked about these guys being offensive fighters. There was only one who got his offense off, and that was Margarito. These guys were gunslingers coming to a match. You know, you could have said at the top, Cintron had the 357 Magnum, but Margarita had the longer clip. You know, he might have had a 38, but it had a lot of shots in there and a lot of different shots, and he used all of them. The cut on the eye came in the third round, then he went down twice in the fourth round, and then two more times in the fifth round. He had never steadied himself. A courageous effort just to stay with it. But Antonio Margarito, the champion of the world, was sensational. Let's look at the first knockdown that was scored from Margarito, Teddy. There's a melee breaking out of ring, but security's right on top of it as we show you the knockdown there. Nothing really clean landed. That's why I use the words I use that not just physically he's been hurt, but psychologically, emotionally, emotionally, mentally, he was starting to be really broken down, discouraged, separated from himself. He was starting to be demoted to the kind of guy that he didn't want to be. And again, there's Cintron being desperate, throwing desperate punches, falling in, and again, not holding himself up, showing the look of a guy that's really lost, a guy that really doesn't believe that he has a chance. And when he looked at the corner, the corner understood that, they read that, and they saved him. You well, know, there was a melee to the side of the ring here afterwards, which is unfortunate, and it included someone from the camp of Kermit Cintron. Things are now under control as the great security here at Caesars Palace has taken care of it. Obviously, emotions running high in such a big main event and such an outcome that happened in destructive fashion. Let's send it up to the ring to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of two minutes, 12 seconds in round number five. Our referee in charge, Kenny Bayless, recognizes the corner. Upon their suggestion, he stops the contest. The winner by way of technical knockout, and he is still the WBO welterweight champion of the world, Antonio Tony Margarito. Tony Margarito. He says he's underrated. He got some serious respect tonight. Jeremy Schaap is in the ring with all the details. Jeremy. Joe, thanks very much. Kermit, obviously very disappointing. What went wrong tonight? Uh, I, I don't know. You know, I was trying to um, use my jab, like my trainer said, but I wasn't using it as much. I should have, you know, throw more punches and be more cautious about it, but uh, hey, um, coming with a good left uppercut, I think it was, uh, opened my eye and my eyes, I, it just started bothering me. But um, you know, I try, I try to come back. You know, um, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know what to say. You know, I mean, like five years in the, you know, in this sport. Look how far I got. You know, um, I'll be, I'll be back though. I'll be back. You know, I'm gonna train harder, and uh, hopefully I get another world title shot. What did you see from Tony Margarito compared to what you expected? Uh, he was strong. I mean, you know, um, he just kept coming forward. 
my job was to, um, you know, push it forward, but I wasn't doing the job like my trainer said. And, you know, that's what we, uh, we came here to uh, be prepared for. And it just didn't go the, the way I wanted it to go. But, I mean, you know, I, like I said, I'll, I'll be back. Thanks very much, Kermit. Back down to you, Joe. Thank you very much, Jeremy Shep. Antonio Margarito, the TKO win. Kermit Cintron saying, I will be back. Cintron's first loss as a pro. 24 and 1 now. Margarito improves the 32 and 4. Let's send it back up to Jeremy Schapp. Joe, thanks very much. Tony was so confident coming in this fight, so relaxed. How did he know? Que pude entrar esta pelea muy relajado, con confianza. ¿Cómo sabías que ibas a ganar? Bueno, primeramente quiero darle gracias a Dios por por haber ganado mi combate. Y sí, andamos confiados con nosotros. Sabíamos que que él era un pegador, entonces este, nos mantenimos tranquilos. Yes, first of all.